Good morning and welcome to This Week. A monumental man. He no longer belongs to us. He belongs to the ages. Nelson Mandela, revolutionary, prisoner, president, and prophet. Sometimes it falls upon a generation to be great. Let your greatness blossom. This morning, how he transformed our world, the lessons for our politics today, and a look back at his remarkable interview with Ted Koppel just days after leaving prison. To spend uh, 27 years at the prime of your life is a tragedy. Then, from Wendy's to the White House, America debates inequality, growth, and fairness. We tackle it here with two key senators, plus James Carville and Mary Matlin join our powerhouse roundtable right here this Sunday morning. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos starts now. Hello again in South Africa today, preparations for the most massive memorial service in memory. Pope Francis, four American presidents, the Dalai Lama, dozens of world leaders will be there Tuesday to remember a giant of our time. And this morning we're going to reflect on Nelson Mandela's legacy, his impact on America's politics with several who knew him well and worked with him closely. First, let's go to ABC's chief foreign correspondent, Terry Moran, just outside Mandela's former home in Soweto. Good morning, Terry. I see the rain has just started all around you. That's right, George. Right now, the rain has just opened up on this scene here, but it hasn't dampened the spirits here in Soweto. Just up the street, as you say, from Nelson Mandela's home, you might call it the humble Mount Vernon of South Africa, a remarkable national celebration right across South Africa, the passing of the great man being marked in song and pride and smiles, not tears or sorrow. Today, Sunday, a national day of prayer and reconciliation. We were, we were at the Regina Mundi Church here in Soweto. That was a center of resistance and sanctuary during the apartheid era. There and in houses of worship across South Africa, prayers lifted up for Nelson Mandela in English, in Afrikaans, in Zulu, in Kosa, in Swana, in all the many tongues of this truly rainbow nation. And he was really the one who kept them together and gave them the opportunity to begin again with his courage and compassion and his remarkable capacity for forgiveness. The Nelson Mandela family issued a statement on their behalf. They're in mourning, of course, and they said, we have lost a great man, a son of the soil, whose greatness in our family was in the simplicity of his nature. Mm. Terry, walk us through what's gonna happen the rest of the week there in South Africa. Well, Tuesday is the big day, George. That is when President Obama and the other presidents and potentates and princes will come here to South Africa and join 90,000 South Africans in the FNB Stadium. That was the last place uh, that the public saw Nelson Mandela at the 2010 World Cup. He was there, uh, and he will be there in spirit as the country says its farewell to him. There will then be three days in which his body will lie in state so that people can come pay a personal tribute to him. And then on Sunday, he will be flown about 700 miles home to Kunu in the Transkei, his ancestral village, where he will be laid to rest. George. Okay, Terry, thanks very much. And with that, let's take a closer look at Mandela's long and complicated history of the United States. He had a deep impact on our politics long before setting foot on our soil. Here's ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl, on how Mandela prodded, consoled, scolded, and inspired American presidents. Nelson Mandela loomed large in America long before he was freed from prison. It was 25 years to take that man away. Inspiring a mass movement against racism and intolerance. Apartheid, no, we want freedom, yes! But Mandela's relationship with U.S. presidents has been far more complicated. When he was locked up in 1962, the U.S. government was silent. In 1966, Bobby Kennedy went to South Africa and took a stand against racism, giving the greatest speech he ever delivered. Each time a man stands up for an ideal, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. But from LBJ to Nixon and even Jimmy Carter, South Africa's apartheid government was actually a U.S. ally in the Cold War. 
As the anti-apartheid movement grew, a young college student named Barack Obama was inspired by Mandela to give his very first political speech. The man in the White House then said no to sanctions against South Africa, insisting they wouldn't work. But Congress defied Ronald Reagan and imposed sanctions anyway. Reagan took his own stand against apartheid by appointing America's first black ambassador to South Africa. Nelson Mandela should be released to participate in the country political process. Four years later, Mandela was finally free, greeted as a hero in his first visit to America and warmly welcomed at the White House. Mr. Mandela, a man who embodies the hopes of millions. It was Bill Clinton with whom Nelson Mandela would develop the closest bond. Mandela, now president of South Africa, visited the White House during the darkest days of the Clinton presidency, and he gave his friend a boost. Our morality does not allow us to desert our friends. A friendship Clinton treasures to this day. We just hit it off. I just adored him. And he was always, you know, he was a true friend. Mandela, as an ex-president, met with George W. Bush in 2005, but there was no love lost there. Mandela was one of Bush's harshest critics when it came to Iraq. When we talked to Bush about the ailing Mandela earlier this year, there were no hard feelings. He promoted freedom and was a, a really great leader. He was smart uh, and capable and made his mark. Obama only met Mandela once and ever so briefly as a junior senator, but his connection may be the most profound. It was Mandela, he says, who awakened him to the wider world, inspiring him to political activism gave me a sense of what human beings can do when they're guided by their hopes and not by their fears. In other words, there might not be a President Obama if it weren't for Nelson Mandela. For This Week, Jonathan Carl, ABC News, Washington.